a little while back, I was trying to find a way to combine the realism of a th software like 3D Stager with all the ray tracing and shadows and real 3D rendering with the photo editing and all the tools of Photoshop and the speed that it has. And so I found this workflow that I haven't really seen anyone talk about. And so I thought it'd be cool to share it with everyone. But what I'll do is show you a little mood board I have. And so the idea is I want something like this where it's a system using one model where I can change the graphic every single time and I don't have to go into uh, the 3D software every time I want to change the image. I can do that in Photoshop. So the idea is I would render, like if I had this pack for example, it would be a hard plastic material, completely blank, and then in Photoshop I can overlay a graphic onto it. So I'm using that pre-rendered thing overlaid with a Photoshop graphic. And so I get both and I can actually have like a library of, of materials at that point. So if I wanted like a hard plastic, I could swap it out with a cardboard or a transparent plastic or whatever else that I wanted to be underneath the graphic. Um, so anyway, what I'll do first is in Stager, I will import that model I have already prepared. So I'll drag and drop that and then I'll center it. And now I want to set up the camera. Uh, so if I go to camera and change the settings, essentially what I'll be doing is export this scene into Photoshop. So I'll kind of position it roughly somewhere that looks good. Uh, yeah, it looks fine to me. And I'll, this is like as far as I need to go it's because this is going to be the graphic. This is not the material. So I will say file, export, scene, and I'll save it as a GLTF, which I'll be honest, I have no idea what that is, but Photoshop can read it. So I'll export that. And that'll only take a second. Then if I hop into Photoshop, I can drag and drop that. Click OK. And right off the bat, there's a couple things. So you want to make sure you're in the 3D workspace. And if you only see a black screen, that's because it's a glitch in Photoshop. You just have to uninstall with all your preferences and everything. It just that's just how it is. It's real annoying. Uh, but anyway, what I want to do is first change the size of the canvas because for some reason it, it crops it. So I'll go image canvas size and I want the height to match the width. So 2100. And that if I hit control zero, I can zoom out. So that's good. And so essentially the way this is going to work is if I go into the material that was in the layer section, by the way, so select the layer, texture, base color, and then double click this one next to the eye. But so that brings me here. If I were to edit this graphic, like if I made a new layer and just took a paintbrush, made that a little bigger, and then just started painting over. So you can kind of see what it does. Save that and go up. You'll see it applied to the graph or to the model. And so what I want is everything besides my paintbrush to be transparent. I don't because I want the material to be underneath it. So what I'll do is in the 3D section, I'll select the model and tie the opacity to this file. So bag material default texture. So I'll go to opacity, bag material default texture. And so now it's transparent. But there's a new problem in that I can see the other side of the model because it's like seeing through. So what I'll do, I think that was in, yeah, that was in scene. So if I remove hidden back faces, that gets rid of that. And I want to get rid of the shadows. So now that is looking good. There's a little bit of weirdness on the back. You can see, um, I'll get that later, but for now that's good. Um, and so what I can do is make a new document. I'll say this is going to be another 1080 by 1080. So file new pixels 1080 by 1080 72. And so this will be like my main hero document and I will save this guy to get rid of that. Actually, the reason this is popping up is because I had to get rid of my preferences because I had that black screen issue, but I'll save it to my computer desktop. I'll just call this story. Okay. And then in my main hero one, I'll drag that thing into it and I'll scale it up. It'll be a square. So it should fit perfect. And so 
it is already here in my scene. So I'll close those two. And so now what I'll do is like, if I ever want to edit it, I'll go into, okay, don't show me. Um, same thing. So it opens the same file, but now what I want to add is the material underneath it. So I'll go into stager and here I'll render whatever material I want. So I'll just do a couple off the cuff. Like I'll drag this guy. Uh, that looks fine. I'll mess with the scale and you can mess with it however you want. And so I'll say that looks good. Go render. I'll just, I'll say draft for now. Um, PNG and then just render this out. So that just saved out and you'll kind of see here shortly. Oh, actually, you know what? Keep in mind, you could change the settings however you want. So change the lighting on your environment and whatnot. I probably would, re would recommend from here on uh, disabling the ground plane, but it's whatever. Um, so anyway, you, from this point, you'll kind of see where the crackhead part of it's coming in. Like all this stuff is like barely working together, but it is working. Um, so now if I drag that render in, um, it is, as you can see, showing the material under like that I just rendered while also using the mask of the image that I, that I drew on it. And I could actually change the blending mode to get something a little more interesting. And this is the kind of mock-up I was looking for. So I could essentially render this big library of assets with a uh, stager here. So if I actually hop back into it, you can see there's all these different materials I can choose from. If I wanted, like this is a pretty cool paper one. I can render all those out, get the lighting right, make it a lot better than this two second render, and then use my overlaying graphic to get a cool image on it. And this is actually the workflow we use at EA. Um, it's something that it took me a while to figure out, but like it really helped us with all the loot boxes and whatnot to like get a high quality real quick. Um, but yeah, so now what I actually want to do is fix this issue here. So I'll double click in that. And like before, I'll double click into the base thing. Don't show. And this part to get a better idea of what, uh, where everything is. Cause like when we painted it, it just kind of like haphazardly showed up and it's like, Oh, okay. There's a graphic. But if you want to exactly design it, what you'll do is in stager, you'll need the UVs. So you can get them however you want. But if you have your model here in stager, you could just go to edit or object export UVs and say to the desktop. And once that exports should only take a second. I'll go ahead and open that PSD. And so this is the UV of it. And let me get rid of all these guides. Actually get rid of the lock and then I'll just copy all this into this layer. And so what it's essentially doing is, let me kind of activate the right ones, is it's showing me what is what on the graphic. So it's not labeled very well, but it kind of gives me a better idea, I guess. So essentially what you'll do is turn on this texture grid. Maybe I'll scale this down a bit. It seems a bit large. There we go. Um, I'll scale this down and it'll give me a better idea of what it is I'm looking at. So I'll save this and go into there. So you'll see, I see the A row B through E and uh, what is that? Seven through nine or no. Uh, okay. Yeah. So essentially what I'll do is mask out. I want to say, let me, oh, I can actually get rid of this. This is the old one. But in this one, I'm looking at roughly this area here on the left. So I'll hide this and show this. And what I'll do is, so apparently this is the back, this is the front. That's what I'm getting at. So I'll just mask out the front one. I will grab the oh, wrong lasso tool. My preferences are all deleted. So I'm just heartbroken. But let me do that. And so now if I just like, that's a quick and dirty mask because it, it doesn't matter how exact it is. But if my art was on this layer, I'll just apply that mask, hide everything else, control S and hopefully, yep, that got rid of pretty much all of it because it was somehow clipping through this part somewhere. Um, so you can just get rid of the whole thing. It doesn't matter because you can't see it anyway. Um, but yes, I think there's a little bit more. And so you can just like mess around and see exactly where that's coming from. Might be the bottom there. 
But anyway, that's fine for now. And so what I'll do is I'll just save this and then it follows upstream. So it is gone now. And so you would just make a tweak here, save it, save it here, and here it is. And another thing, if you want the background gone, a good way to go about that is if I were to render it, render a PSD. And so what that'll do is pretty much, it's the same document, but it has layers. So I'll go ahead and click render. And so that just saved out. I will go ahead and open it. And what this is, it's all the layers. So I got, what is that? Uh, just some mask, clown pass, depth, or uh, another one with the ground plane, depth, and then the actual PNG here. So what I could do is, take, I'll just take this denoised one, control C, and go into this guy, control shift V, places it in the exact same spot. And if I control select it, hide it, I can select the, uh, the render and apply the mask. So now it cut out the whole thing. And so using that workflow, you could, if I go back to the rainbow packs, just make a bunch of different assets super quick while getting the realism of 3D rendering while the speed of something like Photoshop. And yeah, so that is the crackhead workflow in combining Photoshop and 3D Stager.